Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Saramonic SRXM1, which is kind of like a miniature microphone. It's a three and a half millimeter microphone, and I'm gonna show you that right now. That's what it looks like. So it's made to plug into cameras, obviously, and then become kind of like a miniature shotgun mic. So let's get a closer look, and um, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is a close up of the microphone right here. Um, this little windscreen thing does come with it, but I'll pull that off just to show you what that looks like inside there. So it actually looks pretty nice. The quality feels pretty decent, I must admit. It seems to be made of some sort of uh, rubberized plastic or something like that. It does have a little rubber mount here. It's kind of like, I guess that's to stop rubbing and vibration sounds and uh, handling sounds and all those kind of things. And then you've got three and a half mil jack on this side that swivels all the way around like that. So it's basically made to stick in the side of your camera or the top of your camera, wherever your mic jack is on the Sony A, um, I was almost at A7 III. On the Sony RX100, this will just sit right in the side and you can basically point it forward or you can just spin it around in the jack to point it backwards. So I think it's really good for um, if you were filming something or doing a vlog and filming something that's not your face, you could actually point the microphone back towards you or you could flip it forward if you had the camera in selfie mode or you wanted to you know, record other people talking and things like that. So um, yeah, this little windscreen thing came with it. It's just kind of like a normal foam one, but I do believe you can buy the furry dead cat style one as well. So the most important thing about this obviously is what does it sound like? Now, right now you're hearing my voice on the internal microphone. I was, just, I was gonna use another microphone, but I thought, it's probably easier if you hear my voice for a long period of time using the internal microphone so you can tell the difference. Um, yeah, so this is my voice right now on the Sony RX100 Mark 7. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. And now what you're hearing is my voice using the Saramonic SRXM1. So testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. You can probably tell there's quite a clear difference. The Saramonic seems to pick up more of the low end frequencies, like the bass kind of tones and things like that which is nice because one thing that internal microphones always struggle with is they seem to be really tinny and really trebly and they kind of only pick up the high end. Um, the low end kind of gets distorted or you can't really hear it very well. So yeah, I find this microphone does a pretty good job of picking those up. What we're gonna do now is put the microphone through a few different scenarios. So one of them will be in a car um, where there's a lot of road noise and things like that uh, with and without the microphone. The second one we'll do is just a normal outside um, like just basically outside with some wind and things like that. And the third one is what I'm doing right now, which is just indoors, kind of a controlled environment and just to see what it sounds like. So I'll do some things as well where I flip the microphone backwards and film something else while I'm talking into the microphone. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice and neat on the side of the camera. I really, really like it. For me, I've seen some people vlogging with kind of like a grip and then using a Rode Video Mic Pro, something like this on the side of the camera and it's, it makes the setup quite big when you've got an RX100 which is nice and small and then you got a microphone like this or even a little bit small It's still quite a big package if I was gonna vlog with something like that I'd just end up using my a7 III because honestly by the time you've got the grip and everything else It's not too much bigger um, The weight might be a bit heavier, but yeah So let's go through those little tests now and then you can hear the microphone in those different scenarios and then we'll come back I'll tell you exactly what I think about it and uh, yeah That'll be it. So I hope you've enjoyed so far all right, so this is just another little recording test using the Saramonic microphone right now. We're in the car, it's raining, so we've got a lot of road noise, and just noise generally from in the car. Um, this is what the Saramonic sounds like, and the next thing you'll hear is just the internal microphone of the Sony RX100. Okay, now we're recording exact same environment using the Sony RX100 internal microphone. So again, it's raining, there's a lot of noise. Um, yeah, I think the Saramonic will sound a lot better, but yeah, let's move on to the next tests. All right, so we're back again with the Saramonic actually plugged into the camera. What I'm gonna do now is get closer to the camera so you can hear the difference in the sound as I get a little bit closer. So I'm just gonna keep on talking and get a little bit closer to the microphone. So that's what this is sounding like. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Right then, I was probably about a foot away from the microphone, something like that. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is actually turn the microphone so to the point where it's backwards, just so you can hear what the sound how the sound changes as the microphone moves or just to simulate what it would be like if you turn the camera around or what it would sound like uh, picking up the person behind the camera if the microphone was pointing forward. So the microphone's pointing right at me at the moment. I'm gonna start tilting it. Hopefully there's not really any handling noise and I'm gonna go straight up. So right now the camera is pointing upwards like that and this is what it sounds like. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm gonna turn the microphone backwards. So right behind the microphone is my computer monitor. So it might 
bounce the sound around or something weird like that. This is basically what it sounds like when it's backwards. So um, this is basically to simulate if I was behind the camera and I had the microphone pointing forwards or something like that. Because if you are vlogging, you might want to spin the camera around really quickly. You don't want to be always moving the microphone back and forward type thing. So just want to simulate basically how this is going to pick up sound. So again, this would be if you were pointing the camera maybe at yourself and the microphone was pointing backwards or if you're filming something else and the microphone was pointing in the direction the camera was filming, if that makes sense. So um, the next test is going to be we're just going to go out during the day and hopefully we get a little bit of wind just so we can put it through its paces and compare it to the internal microphone. Um, yeah, so it'll be the next test. I'll see you then. Outside now, it's quite windy. My eyes are watery. That's how windy it is. And right now you're hearing the internal microphone, so this is what it sounds like handling noise. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little bit of footage and listening to the microphone compared to the internal microphone. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through some pros and cons that I found with the microphone. And um, yeah, then we'll wrap up the review. So the first pro obviously is it's really nice small size. I like how it just sits in the side of the camera. It doesn't protrude. It's not like a video mic pro or anything like that where I've got to find somewhere to put it. It just rests in the jack, which is really, really good. Now, one thing about it resting in the jack is be very careful you don't kind of snap the end off in the mic jack or something like that. That hasn't happened to me but I have put it in my pocket a few times with the microphone connected. Hasn't been a problem, but I probably would advise against doing that because yeah, you, you definitely don't want to snap the jack off in the mic, uh, the actual plug off in the mic jack. That'd be, yeah, it'd be a nightmare. So as part of that last pro, it's good because it fits on smaller cameras like GoPros, RX100, things like that. It's just the perfect size in comparison to those cameras. So it's really, really nice to use um, like with cameras that size. Another thing I really like about the Saramonic SRXM1 is the fact that it swivels and turns quite easily so you can point it in any direction you like so it doesn't really matter what side of the uh, camera your mic jack's on or anything like that whether you're standing behind it or in front of it um, you can move it in pretty much any position you like which yeah i really really like that about it probably the biggest pro for me is it's a massive improvement over the internal microphone so um yeah it's just way better it picks up a lot more of those lower frequencies it's a lot cleaner sound and yeah i just prefer it a lot more than the internal microphone and that's probably going to go for pretty much every camera. Um, all the cameras I've used, the internal microphones aren't really that good. So this is definitely a good upgrade. And even when you're standing behind the camera, the microphone still picks up decent sound. So if you're vlogging, you have the camera pointing forwards and you forget to point the camera backwards towards you, it still picks up pretty decent audio. That can also be a bit of a con because it can pick up a lot more sound around the microphone rather than directly. Um, it does pick up sound obviously better directly in front of it but um, it still picks up sound when you're behind it. So that is a bit of a pro and a con. So it just depends what you, just depends what you're doing. Is it feels like it's quite good quality and it's a pretty good price. So it was 30 to 40 Australian dollars, um, which is pretty cheap for a microphone um, that works like this. I think it's pretty good quality. Like I said, the build quality is pretty nice and the actual overall sound quality I think's improved massively. So now what I'm gonna do is just go over some cons that I found with the microphone while I've been using it. So the first con for me is it seems to pick up quite a bit of handling noise. So if you're handling the camera or anything like that, you can hear it kind of rubbing through the microphone. Um, so one thing to keep in mind if you are using this microphone is to be very careful when you're handling the camera. Even when I was using my Gorillapod, which is similar to this, but a larger version. Um, this is also a Gorillapod, but I've got the larger version. When you're kind of turning it around, even if you're really careful it seems to make rubbing sounds. Maybe the rubber mount on the microphone moves around or something, but you do get a few rubbing sounds here and there. So um, yeah, it's a pretty big con because it's quite annoying. If you were vlogging, you're gonna be moving around quite a lot. And it's hard to be mindful of how fast you're moving the camera or how you're handling the camera um, when you're just trying to vlog and kind of get the shot. So for me, I'll probably only use this microphone when I'm doing sit down stuff like this, because this is what you're listening to right now. But when it comes to vlogging and things like that, I'm not sure I will use it. Because um, like I said, the handling noise for me was a little bit annoying. Um, I've watched other reviews and not many people have seemed to say anything about it. But yeah, with me, I just found there was a bit of handling noise when you're grabbing the camera or the gorilla pod and kind of moving around quickly. So um, yeah, that's a bit of a con for me. The next con is it's kind of like all microphones. It does sound better the closer you are. So the more distance you have from the microphone, obviously the more it's going to pick up echoes and other people talking and more sound behind it and things like that that's pretty standard with all microphones so it's not really a con just for this one but i thought i'd mention it because um yeah as you get further and further away from the microphone it does degrade in sound quality a little bit you start to pick up the echoes and like i said other people talking and stuff like that but yeah that's pretty normal with pretty much every microphone 
And the last con for this microphone is it still struggles with wind a little bit. And like I did say at the start of this review, you can buy like a dead cat kind of cover to go over this microphone that's meant to stop wind noise a lot more. I don't have that, so I wasn't able to test that, unfortunately. All I've got on at the moment is the foam windscreen. So if you are in a windy environment, keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this review. Hope you enjoyed. Like I said, I probably won't continue to use this microphone for vlogging and things like that, but I'll use it for sit down stuff like this or some DIY videos or something where I'm not handling the camera too much. That's probably a bit my fault. Maybe I'm a little bit rough with moving the camera, but even times where I just would hold the grill pod and kind of turn it and swing it a little bit, you could hear like that bassy rubby sound, rubbing sound, sorry, uh, coming through the microphone. So yeah, that was a little bit annoying, but other than that, I think it's a really, really good mic. It definitely improves the quality over the internal microphone, so it's something I'm definitely going to use, like I said, for sit-down videos and things like that. And um, yeah, maybe some vlogs if I can kind of handle the camera a little bit better. But yeah, apart from that, hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks very much for watching.